everyone! I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to this month's episode of Dye Pop PS. This is the first video on my channel where I have brought in this new backdrop. It is still very much a work in progress as you can see. Uh, I still need to secure the shelving to the wall. Maybe we'll add some lights? Uh, let me know if you have any suggestions in the comments below. In July, you voted for me to play with saturated cool tones for the next Die Pop PS episode. And well, you know I love some saturated cool tones. That is so much up my alley. But I thought that I'd still play with layering and create some saturated tones and maybe do some heavy speckles on top of that. At least that's the plan, but you never know how things might change as we go through. Today we are going to dye two or maybe three skeins of Knit Picks Felici fingering weight yarn. This yarn is awesome. It is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and it is a higher twist than Knit Picks Stroll. Um, so instead of I think 462 yards, this one is 436 yards. I wouldn't call it a high twist yarn, it's just higher twist. Um, it's milled in Italy versus in Peru, and it also has higher quality merino, I believe. So those are the main Felici versus Stroll differences, but it is soft. Um, oh, I guess it also comes with three ties, and the actual hank is a tiny bit smaller than Stroll, but it dyes very, very similarly, and so ultimately that's the important part. So let's go ahead and pre-soak the yarn and get ready for this project. I am pre-soaking the yarn in some plain tap water for 30 plus minutes. I want to try something new and we're going to try a cool vat dyeing technique. I heard about this technique from Joe Cole from What the Flock Yarn and Fiber and this method looks really, really great. Essentially, we're gonna set up our color baths in these tubs, let the yarn sit in it for a while until it absorbs the color, and then heat set it. And since we're planning to do low immersion next anyway, it's a way for me to get all three colors going at the same time without having to um, deal with heating up the pots and waiting for things to cool when I can handle it. So yeah, I think that this sounds like a lot of fun. These are just some plastic shoe boxes that I use for dyeing. And currently they each have two cups of just plain tap water in them. There is no acid yet. And I'm gonna use some premixed stock solutions today. Now my stock of Derma Peacock Blue, it does have some specks of color in it. You can see as I put that in, uh, you can see that cloud of specks, maybe. I don't know if this color will do what I need it to do with this technique, but we are going to give it a fair shot. And who knows, we might end up with something cool, but some of this color will end up in each of the vats. Okay, so in this first vat, I've added half a cup so far. I'm going to make that a whole cup. And now I'm not sure how much of this color I really have left. So I might need to grab another blue, but I'm gonna start with a third of a cup of this blue in each of the two other um, containers. And there's a tiny bit left. Let's go ahead and do about a tablespoon. So these each had a third of a cup plus a tablespoon, which would be about uh, 75 milliliters of that color. And the full cup would be about 240 milliliters. For our deep purpley color, I'm gonna add a half a cup of the color Jacquard Chestnut. This color is fairly purplish on its own. Um, but I'm hoping, and you can see how it is sort of purple versus a brown. And I'm hoping that with that blue, uh, we might get a nice purpley color. But it's hard because that blue is not all in solution. 
And so this might be a little warm, a little too cranberry. So I might grab some more blue, but I'm excited by that color. Using the same cup and the Jacquard Bright Yellow 1% Stock Solution, I am going to add half a cup. And so you can see that that little bit of chestnut with the blue did um, sort of deepen the brightness. Uh, and so we're going to create this green here, which I swear, I think once that blue dissolves, we might get, I'm going to go get some more blue, I think. I just added a third of a cup of the Jacquard Brilliant Blue to our purple, which has brought it in a much more plum direction, and our green, which has brought it in a more Kelly green. And then of course, we have our original blue, which is looking fairly pale, but I think that's just because it's not super dissolved yet. I expect that these two colors will end up looking more blue shortly. I am now going to add six cups of water to each vat. Okay, I have squeezed out most of the water from our pre-soaked yarn. And now I'm going to take this, sort of dip this into our vat. There is still no acid in here. Um, what I am trying to do is get some good initial coverage of the color on the yarn. I'm not concerned, ooh, there's a little bit of dry area. <laughs> um, I am not concerned about it being a true solid. I am totally fine with it being semi-solid. I just want um, some good color coverage and I don't want a lot of white left behind. And you can see Goodness, even just with this, there's still um, a ton of color left in there. Goodness, I might end up, <laughs> I was like, oh, and then we'll add these like navy speckles on it all. Who knows, maybe it'll be deep enough that I'm just gonna light the yarn like this and leave it at that. Um, that's the thing with these Dye Pop PS episodes. I often start, ooh, I often start things thinking I'm gonna go one way Wow, that is looking almost like a navy versus a purple. There's like purplish to it. It reminds me, you know what? This color reminds me a lot of blued steel, uh, which wasn't quite what I was trying to do, but I'm not mad at it. So obviously with no acid in here and the dye baths being cold, we are not striking right now, but actually, Aha, uh -huh, you can see some areas that did not um, get totally wet with the pre-soak. And so, yeah, now we can try to make sure that they get wet now. Okay, these colors are actually really pretty, really, really pretty. And then the final one. I think that I would, ooh, ooh, we might end up with some speckles because of the way that that blue, um, that first blue is peacock blue. I, I don't do a lot of solid colors, just in general. I love semi-solids, but this, I think, is a good way, ooh, I'm like really excited. This is a good way to start getting some solids, um, to play around with them, and you could set up many colors at once. I know that Joe will then go microwave the yarn to heat set it after it has absorbed the amount of color in his tubs that he wants it to. Uh, and he, I mean, he has a dedicated dye microwave. Um, but that's just a great way, if you have limited stove space, and you don't have a warming counter, it's a way that you can suddenly dye more yarn and play with more color without having more heating spots in your kitchen. I'm now going to add, I think, three tablespoons of white vinegar 
two each that. So don't forget there was no acid in here before. So there was no real way for the colors to start setting. And I am going to sort of distribute the acid like so. What I can't decide is if I want to leave this all at room temperature just in my kitchen, which is probably about seven degrees Fahrenheit, or if I want to bring these outside. Uh, we're not exactly going for solar dyeing today per se, but there's no question that some additional heat out there would help um, these colors set. We're outside where it'll hit the mid to high 80s today. Plus with the sun, we'll get some good heat. Now these aren't sealed, <laughs> like they've got a lid on it, but these are just I think dollar store containers, so they're not um, creating a perfect seal by any stretch. But I'll leave it out here for a few hours. The sun will shift, this will come in the shade, but I think that that will be totally fine. I believe Joe said that he leaves his yarn in the tubs for about 24 hours before microwaving it to set the color. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to wait that long. We'll do some check-ins, but then I think I might have to do one more color. For the fourth color, I took a third of a cup of Jacquard Fire Red, a third of a cup of the 1% Jacquard Brilliant Blue, and poured it into eight cups of water in the plastic tub. Then I rinsed out our Dharma Peacock Blue bottle. I added, I filled it maybe halfway with water, shook it up, and then poured that excess blue into the container as well. This time I didn't pre-soak the yarn as much as pre-wet it, but I did squeeze it in the pre-soak of plain tap water to try to remove air and get it wet before adding it to the vat and moving it around. Then I added three tablespoons of white vinegar, moved things around again, placed the lid on and took this out outside to put with the other colors. When I went to go set this up, I really was intending to create sort of a semi-solid base color and then take that leftover navy with a few other colors, speckle it on top so we could see that undertone sort of show through in like a deep jewel color because there would be an element of a navy like glaze from speckling heavy with it. But then I was like, well, I want to mix up how I do the base color. I want to mix up how I do that semi-solid. And I've been dying to try this technique. And then I'm like, these colors are beautiful and kind of perfect on their own. So yeah, I think I might be changing gears because even that purple that I just created is beautiful. But anyway, I'm going to leave everything out here for an hour. I'll come back and check in and we'll see where we are. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't let me forget. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to give a shout out to all of the Chemnitz Fiber patrons. Uh, Karen Siegel, Ada Lai, and you'll see a bunch of other names going across the screen right now. Uh, Patreon is a platform where viewers can support the content creators that they really enjoy, like me. Um, and I offer a lot of really cool perks in return, like early access to new content, behind the scenes sneak peeks, uh, permanent Etsy shop coupons, and more. Uh, you can find a link to my Patreon in the video description and iCard. But thank you, thank you so much, patrons, for all of your support. After an hour, all of these are clearing somewhat. I mean, there's definitely still color left in here, but compared to how it started, that is not very much. Ooh, this one is almost completely clear. I'm slowly picking each one up. That one has mostly absorbed. Look at all this color we got just from sitting out here and we certainly have some very saturated uh, cool tones. I mean this one is definitely a warm tone purple and oh we definitely have some tonal aspects here. So I just opened up towards the center you can see we've got some lighter purple there probably because around the time might have been the one area that I did not 
uh, futz with very much. But, and this is also the one that was not pre-soaked. But man, okay, we are gonna stay out. I think I'm just gonna leave these out for another couple of hours because it's absorbing. So maybe I'll come back in two hours and we'll decide if we wanna add more vinegar or how we wanna proceed at that point. Two hours later, and we're looking at the other angle, and the sun is leaving my patio. Wow, that is looking almost clear. The water is absolutely warm. I did off camera come back and move things around like once, which honestly made a really big difference because the water went from being a little pastel to almost completely clear now. Um, and as I said, the water is definitely warm. I think that this green has the most pigment left in it, but if I was washing this and that was the amount of color bleeding, I would not be disappointed at all. And if we look at the spoon, each of the colors, you can barely see any of the pigment. I think it's really only showing up. There you go. I think it's really only showing up because we've got these clear containers. Uh, so, again, the sun is leaving, but I think I'm going to go ahead and just leave things in here. Technically, we might not need to heat set it because uh, we are effectively solar dying now. But it is nice to know that in about three hours, we have absorbed almost all of the color that we had in there. I'm excited. These colors are beautiful. Is this different from the original vision I planned? Yes, but I'm just so excited that I almost don't care. <laughs> okay, uh, I think it'll be fun editing and adding some like, that's what you think kind of comments in there along the way. Anyway, I am, I guess I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit a couple hours. Um, Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and let the urine cool in these pans. I'm about to go pick up the kids from camp, and so leaving the urine here is honestly the most convenient thing, and so I don't think a couple more hours is gonna hurt anything. I mean, it's absolutely not gonna hurt anything. Um, the question will be, do I still wanna steam set this? And I'm leaning towards yes. I think if I'd started off with really hot water, I wouldn't feel the need to, but these colors are saturated, so I do think I want to steam set it um, in the end. But, yeah, I'm going to leave it out here until for, until, probably until the kids go to bed, and then we'll come and steam it. I missed sundown by a little bit, so I brought this inside <laughs> to take it out. And you can see almost all of this color is in our yarn. In my steamer basket, I have a tiny bit of water at the bottom, about an inch or so. And I'm gonna add all the yarn in and steam it all at the same time. Oh, this is that purple we added at the end and it's beautiful. There's a tiny bit of color from the green, less so from the purple. I mean, I would say that this is completely clear, but steam setting just to be safe. I think in total, each box ended up being probably around nine cups of water, once you included the dye, and about three tablespoons of white vinegar. So not, not a lot of acid, and oof, this is beautiful. These actually look really, really nice together, which was one of the goals. One of the goals was to make some stuff that were pretty. And this one, this one feels very navy. When I was looking and checking on them outside, they definitely feel semi-solid. It's just a deeper tone. It's not a pastel. It's like a saturated tone and a medium tone. I just moved over to the stove top and turned on the stove and I'm gonna steam set all of this for I think 20 minutes. The 20 minutes are up and I'm gonna take this off the heat and let it cool but just to Oh, is this just to show I don't think the colors bled onto each other at all and oh, these colors are beautiful all right uh, once they cool off then we can wash them let's wash all of our yarn and oh my 
Those are some random, what? Okay, that is weird. Those, what are those bleached spots? Those were not there before. Was the green one on the bottom? Are you seeing that? The spots almost look like they could have been an imprint from the steam basket. But there really is no color at the bottom, so I don't know. Those are so random. Isn't like horrible or anything? I, it's just perplexing. I mean, maybe there were some dry patches. I just totally did not see that sooner. And they're so pale, I'm not sure exactly what happened. But anyway, hopefully that is somewhat balanced. And if not, well, maybe I will come back in a bonus video and over dye that one if that's bothering me. Um, yeah, maybe we'll do that. Um, but anyway, that water is clear. I'm washing all four. Let's try some soap. Um, I've got just some green dish soap here. Uh, I shouldn't be super worried because the water was clear from the soaking. And then we also steam set it. So the color should be in the yarn, even as saturated as it is. And we are looking uh, Maybe there's a tiny bit of bleeding. Um, I do have all four skins in here at once, so. Yeah, but those spots in the green really have me confused. If bleeding is a massive concern, you can always wash them one at a time or use like a bigger volume of water for the rinse. But. Um, I would say that this is pretty darn good. So I'm going to put them through my spin dryer, hang it up to dry, and we'll come back and take a another look. And yeah, maybe maybe this video will get a part two if I decide to over dye this green. Here is the finished dried yarn. These colors are bold, saturated, and still definitely semi-solid. You can tell, especially on the purple, that we have some areas that are so pigmented and still super saturated, but less so. Um, also in this more navy and the blue, these are tonals that are going to have this depth and variation that we love in a tonal. It's just that those lighter shades are so saturated already, which is why I couldn't bring myself to over dye them. But. There is one thing that I cannot for the life of me figure out, and that is our green. Let's flip this over. What on earth are these like bleach spots on here? I have only started editing the footage, and it really seems to me, based on the placement, that something that these came in contact with in the steamer removed pigment from this yarn. I mean, I did not observe this taking it out of the container. And believe me, as I go through and edit, I'm going to be paying close attention to see if I can see what was going on here. The placement is not that balanced, but they are located in more than one area on the skein. And it's not about the ties either. Like, where they're located is not near... I guess it's sort of near in some spots, like there it's a little bit near, but it's also just sort of in the middle and just, what? What? There is a slight chance that there were some dry patches, but I don't know. I don't know if I cleaned the pasta insert with, uh, sometimes I've scrubbed things with like a Clorox wipe. That's the only thing I can think of. I'm honestly at a complete loss. I mean, it did seem like something, some kind of reaction happened with the pot because when I lifted it up and flipped it over, this is what I saw. And there around the size, it's something from the holes could have happened. But yeah, it just seems like some color was removed. And this one was on the bottom and I see no evidence of this on any of the other skeins. The only other thing I can think of is that I did not double check my 
uh, shoe boxes to see which one that I had used with the green. Um, it's possible that it was the one that I used with the alum mordant, but I don't, I don't know. I don't think that that should interfere like this. Uh, it just doesn't make sense for it to feel like this speckled and splotched. Arr! Well, this is not where I thought that we would end up when I went to start filming this video. I truly intended to dye some saturated bases and then go and speckle with some navy. Uh, similar to a Leave No Dye Behind video I'd done recently, I thought that it would be fun and new. And yeah, but I ended up really liking this cool vat dyeing technique. Technically, there was some solar dyeing to it because it was outside, so we did get some heat eventually, but I did go ahead and heat set it, and the color set beautifully. But the green, I, I don't know what's going on there. I just know that I am really disappointed, and that's not something I say a lot. When I was out there looking, the green, it's a beautiful green. It's beautiful, it's gorgeous, and I would, in a heartbeat, replicate this color, this hue, this shade again. But what caused those spots? I'm really curious to go through that footage and see if I can see it in the dying vat. Because if it was in the vat, then I wouldn't be as concerned. I'm concerned that something on my stainless steel pasta insert ruined this yarn. And I really shouldn't worry that much. I've used that so many times. It's possible, may, who knows, maybe I scrubbed it with uh, a Clorox wipe and then didn't wash that again, but I've never seen something remove color from yarn quite like that. So I don't know what I'm hoping for. Maybe I guess I'm hoping that there was some just a dry patch of yarn stuck maybe towards the center of the skein, even though I was moving things around and squeezing things in the vat. I don't know. I guess I would almost prefer that to having my pot ruin the yarn. So have you seen something like this before? Let me know in the comments and uh, make sure you like this video if you appreciate my honesty and sharing my changing things up, but sometimes things don't work out and things happen that perplex you and confuse you. And that's really what all of this and all I do here on this channel is about. Um, if you're a huge fan, go and check out the Covenant's Patreon. Um, I offer behind the scenes sneak peeks, early access to new videos like the Die Pop PS series and more. Patrons also vote um, for the theme that will come up in the next video and it's just so much fun. <laughs> Make sure that you're subscribed, turn on no notifications so you never miss a new video. Stay tuned because although I did not over dye all of these with navy, I think that's what's in line for this skein. The speckles are random, or the splotches are random, but not random enough that I would keep it like this. It really feels like a mistake versus a happy accident. So I'm gonna over dye it. <laughs> I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch all of you soon. Bye everyone.